Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect the servo motor to the Arduino Uno motherboard. I'm going to show you two different ways. One is just connecting it um, the way that a lot of people do it with just jumper wires. Um, and the other is using uh, another uh, using a shield to do so. Uh, I'll just tell you right now, this is not the, my board of choice. What I prefer is the Teensy. The Teensy microcontroller is much, much faster and cheaper than the Arduino. Uh, it's just a much better board. And then I also like the Patent Robotics motherboard. It allows you to do the things that we're going to show you today, but it allows you to do them without having to buy extra parts. This is this is a fantastic board. I'll just quickly give you the the um, the website here for it, Patent Robotics. I'll put a link up here in the top corner, and you can get here and download the teen or buy the teen seed, buy the motherboards. They they sell the uh, the the big the big teen seeds, the three point fives, um, as well as the three point twos. Um, super super good super good company very reliable great company okay and the reason i like this board is it allows you to just connect the servo motor directly to it and you're you're done that's all you have to do all right so let me show you how to do it with the with the arduino with the uno okay all right so here we have a whole bunch of female ports and this is a female port and so what we have to do is we have to use male male jumper wires to to connect um, this to the Arduino. All right, and so I've grabbed a black, a red, and a yellow, and I have to tell you that I, I'm, I'm just apologizing right now for the for the color, uh, or for the lighting rather in my in my laboratory. It's not it's not great right now. Um, so I'm going to connect the yellow wire to the outside orange wire. That's going to be my signal wire, and then my red wire to my red wire of the servo. Okay. And that's good. That's my power wire. And then the black wire, I'm going to connect to the brown wire of, of the servo. And that's going to be my, my ground wire. And servos always go like this. It's signal, power, and ground. All right. Okay. And so I'm going to use the, the brown wire here to connect to one of my grounds on the Arduino. And there are three grounds, two on this side and one on this side. You can use any of them, either of them. Uh, this is the red wire, and I'm going to connect that to the 5 volt source of my Arduino. And, and please note that my Arduino is not plugged in. You don't want to connect components while the Arduino is plugged in. And then lastly, I've chosen to connect this to pin 8. And it's important to remember that pin 8. Okay, so now we are connected. I don't like this because these things pull out so easily. They don't stay in very well, but this, this does get the job done. All right. So let me pull this over to the side and um, let's take a look at the code. All right, so um, this code, by the way, is, is found in my Tinkercad space. And so we can get to Tinkercad here. Look at the dashboard. If you want to uh, do a search for Chris Odom, you can. Uh, you want to click on people and then click the little hourglass. There I am. And when you click on me, you'll see all my designs. You click on circuits. And then here, here's the one we're playing with, the serve, servo lib intro. Okay, you can click here or tinker, tinker this. And this is essentially what we just connected. And we can open up the code, this code here. That I'm showing you is in fact this code here. So it's the same same piece of code. You don't have to. That's where you can copy and paste it. What I've done is is I have included the servo.h library. Now this is built into Arduino. You don't have to go up to Sketch and add include a file or include a library. It's already done for you. It's built in, and so you need the pound include and then the the bracket servo.h bracket. I've declared or introduced an integer variable called servo pin. This is the pin that I plugged my servo into. And this next line here takes a little bit of explaining. This is an object, okay? So in the, ser the servo library is a, is a piece of C code. And what, we've, what that piece of code allows you to do is to create a, an object. Literally, it's, it's, a, it's an object. It's not a physical object, but in coding, it's called an object. And then you can you can do a lot of things. You can have methods to those objects. So what I've called that object, so 
the, the word servo, capital S, servo, is an important word. You have to, you have to use that, but then you can call it whatever you want. I've called it my servo, okay? So my servo is a servo, servo object. Uh, I could call it, if I had two servos, I can call it, you know, servo one and servo two, or left servo, right servo, something like that. But they both would be servo objects. So it would be servo, servo left, uh, servo, servo right, or something like that to create two. Um, and we'll see how that gets used down here in a second. Uh, in the setup, we're going to print stuff to the screen. So we need to set the baud rate as usual. And then also in the setup, we need to tell or do we know what pin we're using, what pin our servo is attached to. So it, the way you do that is you call my servo, which is the thing you called up here, and then dot attach. This is a keyword attach. So my servo dot attach. The argument is the servo pin, and that then connects that that pin to uh, to that library, and you're going to be able to use it to control the servo. Um, I've created a servo sandbox function. Okay, and right now it just does two things and I'm calling that servo sandbox from loop. So this loop is going to call servo sandbox over and over and over. All right, so what does it do? So it prints the number 90 to the screen, and that's going to come up over here on the serial monitor. And then we have my servo dot write. Now, this is the thing that actually does the controlling of the servo. So if you think of the servo as as um, as a as a um, no, let me get my my view. If you, if you think of the servo as this thing that spins, okay, over here is zero, and that's going to be 90, and that's going to be 180. And so this, this object is going to be able to, for example, you know, rotate uh, from, from, from the zero position to the one, to the 90 position to the 180 position and anywhere in between. So this is an unmodified servo, and it will only rotate 180 degrees approximately, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to drive it to the 90 degree position. So let's upload that code now and let's see what happens. So of course we need to actually let me let me get this video up here going at the same time. All right. So we're going to connect this. Now we're ready to upload the code. Okay. And Oh, come on. Okay, let me pause it. I don't know why it's, we're having trouble uploading. Let me pause it. All right, I don't know what's happening uh, with the board, but now it's it has uploaded, and um, you, you would have heard a little zip where that servo has turned to the 90-degree position. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this little horn. This, this, this horn is in a bag. If, it, if you buy a servo, it's going to come with a whole bunch of these little melting horns. Some of them look like stars, some of them look like T's. This one here just has one, one arm on it. And I'm going to put it in the 90 degree position. So I know that this is 90 and I'm going to put it there. It is actively sending the servo to 90 degrees. As you can see, the screen here is updating. So you can see it's really rapidly updating um, the, uh, the servo. And if I try to move this, it's going to, it's going to resist my movement. So I don't want to push too hard because I'll strip the little plastic gears in here, but it is actively keeping it at the 90 degree mark. So if I had a weight hanging on this, it would be it would be actively holding that weight in, in place. OK, so I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to add some more code and we'll take a look at what that does in a second. OK, so I've added code. Basically, it's just three different commands. I'm going to this is the this is the original. Okay, it sends it to the 90 degree mark. I'm going to have it wait one second. I'm going to move it to the 180 degree mark, pause for a second. I'm going to move to the zero degree mark and pause for three seconds. Okay, I'm going to print 90, 180, and zero with a line feed to the, to the screen so we can see the, the three happening. And I have a big delay here at the end so you can see the, the triplets. Okay, here we go. Now let's upload it and see what happens. Okay. 0, 90, 180, 0, 90, 180, back to 0 again. You can see, see the numbers 
scroll through the screen as it does the operation zero. That's 90 and that's 180. Okay, pretty handy. Okay. So that's this is this is a, a fine way to connect it. Although um, it it does pose a problem that this thing easily pulls out. Okay, so this is not something that I would recommend. But if you don't have the, the resources and you don't have another another method, this is the well, it's the only game in town. All right. So what you can do is you can buy a sensor shield. Okay. And I'll put a link up here in the top corner uh, from the Patent Robotics. They sell these, uh, and it's a this is a shield. Um, this is one of the reasons I really don't like Arduino is because in order to do to do various things, you got to buy different shields to do them. Whereas the, the the Patent Robotics motherboard, you just plug them in and you're good to go. But anyway, so you you buy a shield, okay? And I'm going to connect this to the Arduino. So I'm going to unplug it here. I'm going to maximize my window so you can see it better All right and if you notice you have these pins on the shield that are going to line up to the to the female ports here and the female ports here okay so we're going to line them up with the with the bottom holes here and the bottom holes there like so and I'm going to squeeze it down and snap them into place and so now this has been mated and I'm now we're going to be able to connect the servo motor uh, much more easily. Let me do a little explaining of the servo of the sensor shield rather really quickly. So these pins here in the middle, these belong to the analog pins, A0, A1, A2, A3, A4. And those are the analog pins, if you remember, are, are right here. These are the analog pins on the Arduino, and these get connected to these pins here, these signal pins. Okay. Um, up here, these pins from from zero there to 13 here, these are your digital pins, which are on this side of the board. Okay, And then well, what, what's really nice about this is that the ground and the voltage, ground and the voltage gets, gets shared by all of these pins here. So all of these ground pins are common and all of these voltage pins are common. And they share that, that ground, that those two grounds over here, for example, those are all connected to these grounds, and this voltage pin here is connected to all of these here. Okay, you can actually run a, an external battery pack here if you want to as well, and then move the jumper. But for our purposes, we're just going to run it off of the computer battery. All right, so let's see, let's see that guy um, uh, get plugged in. All right, so remember. The yellow wire or the orange wire is signal, the red is power, and the, the brown wire is ground. All right. And so it's really, really, really important that you that you connect it in the proper way. So the ground wire is my brown wire, and I'm going to plug it into that ground pin. I'm going to plug it into this ground pin right here. The G stands for ground, the B for volts, and the S for signal. All right. So pin eight is the one is the pin we used. Okay. And I'm going to triple check because you will destroy a servo if you plug it in backwards. So the yellow wire goes to signal, the brown wire goes to ground. And we are ready to plug it in. The code is still on there. The code is going to be running. And so there it is, 90, 180, 0. 90, 180, 0. Okay, what I want to show you right now really quickly at the end is I've run the sweep command. Okay, I've written a sweep command and I've run it. You can't see the code. I want my students to be able to do it and mimic it. But basically, it's just sweeping through all of the positions from 0 to 180 and then back to 0 again. See if you can't write code to make that happen on the sweep command. And the, the last thing I want to leave you with is the, the Arduino library is perfectly fine. Lots of people use it. I don't really like it because it's very it's time based. I prefer a step-based piece of code for running my servos. Um, sometimes time is good, but step is usually better. So pcarduino.com, this is my textbook site. If you go to the Downloads tab, scroll down here to the bottom, Servo Motion Module, this text here, you can copy it and use it. This will run a modified servo that runs 360 degrees in a stepwise fashion. You can see at the very bottom, 
the lowest level functions, and then the medium level functions. Okay, that's it. Thank you.